So greetings Minecrafters and welcome to another Minecraft discussion here today. My name is Kimberly Quinn and I am quite excited to continue our talk on creativity though, though different. We're adding, adding. So we're talking about the, also the traits of creative people. So right out of the gate, um, first of all, remember that we're saying creative people. We've all got it in us. So we, as we talked about it last time, um, sometimes people just I don't know, kind of in denial of their own creativity or something, but really it's all within us. We're all connected by the force, right? And, you know, we all have some creativity. However, some who might seemingly have a little bit more of that going on, uh, there's some traits. And right out, right out of the gate, let's talk about the overlap with the Fast Mind Club because uh, just like when any of us have something extra to deal with, you know, fill in the blank with anxiety, depression, bipolar, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's generally a gift that's something that, that, that we excel at that's, you know, kind of a notch above, you know, um, the general population. And so in general, because we put people in boxes, you know, that goes. The ADHDers, we're saying the Fast Mind Club because it's much more positive and more accurate. Because ADHD is such a misnomer, but I can't get started with that. I already did a video on that. Um, actually a TED talk on that because it, it just drives me a little nuts. So uh, we tend to be extremely creative. There are lots of famous people in the Fast Mind Club who are ultra creative. You know, I'm sure Robin Williams, the CEO of JetBlue, and uh, there's just, there's uh, Whoopi Goldberg. There's just so many, Leonardo da Vinci. Goes on and on and on. All right, so uh, the, the creatives here, um, Overlap with, with, with fast minders. And here's the thing. We are obviously web thinkers. We are not, we kind of born into this linear logical world that we were not given the manual for, you know, or the playbook for to get through it. And so we, we're, we kind of just do our own thing and dance to our own beat amongst the neurotypicals kind of doing our thing. And, um, we also tend to think with our feelings, which is sort of, <laughs> has its pros and cons. We are, we are led around by our heart, which is good. We are passion driven, which is also good. We have an interest based nervous system. So we really, at least the fast mind club members, and again, there's huge overlaps. We're talking about probably, um, you know, many, 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 many of the creatives are going to fit into this interest based nervous system, which means we're passion driven. We don't really don't know how to not do that. Can't really not do that. Uh, the thing is, um, we're like, go, 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 hyper-focus. And then it's kind of like the Cinderella thing where there's a window. And then once we're not interested anymore, it's like, boop, back to a pumpkin, ding, ding, ding. You know, the clock strikes, whatever, and back to a pumpkin we go. So we tend to also be very playful. Many of us are like little kids in a grown-up body. And it doesn't mean that we can't do the adulting thing. It's definitely more, at least for the Fast Mind Club members, remember, overlaps. I'm talking about creatives in general with some overlap, a lot of overlap with the fast minders. So little kids in a grown up body, adulting tends to be a challenge, but we can all, and we can also be very, very centered. We just, we love to play. And as far as imagination goes, which actually Einstein held even higher than knowledge, we are, our inner five-year-old is just right out there most of the time. So if we're stuck in some really horribly boring professional meeting and you know, um, neurotypicals are kind of smiling and nodding because no, because they're good at that. I mean, it, there's it's it's not that's what we wish we could do at some t sometimes because there are advantages to be able to, to compartmentalize and put something off till later. Neurotypicals are very good at that. We are not so much. So a neurotypical might be thinking about the children's book that they long to write or a novel or a film they want to make or a business they want to start or whatever. And the ideas, they start to get flooded with the ideas for it, but their boss is in front of the room with a PowerPoint and there are two people over and she can see you. And so they have this uncanny way to kind of, kind of say, okay, I'm really interested in that, but I'm going to put that away for right now because I really need to hear what she has to say. That is a benefit to the neurotypical world. We're not in that place so much. We'll be smiling, nodding, and when we and nobody really knows while our minds went out the door around the block and we have the first you know three or four or five chapters of the children's book plus illustrations right here so pros and cons to that definitely pros and cons because it can trip us up at times too so what else do we want to say we're playful i made some uh, notes here hyper focus okay so the fast minder is definitely hyper focus also neurotypicals who are creatives when they're engaged they're just full throttle 
determined. We are determined to get whatever it is done when we're in that flow zone. So um, we we combine we combine the imagination, the playfulness, the fun, and the hard work. We have some perseverance when it matches with our interest-based nervous system. One thing I found interesting, because I, 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 I was, you know, just researching this a little bit more, and it talks about how the creative can be really more of an ambivert, like, an, you know, and when we put people in boxes, remember, it's, they're no, it's not a one-size-fits-all situation, so most people who know, who know me would say I'm, like, <clears throat> extroverted, you know, I just, I love people, it's so true, I love people, my kids joke when, I'll, you know, I'll go down in the line at Yankee Stadium and I'm gone for like 40 minutes because I made friends in the entire line. In Europe, I made friends all over the place. I do, I love people. I find people fascinating. You know, the people you'll never, probably never even see again. Their stories, I mean, it's just so true. And I'm, it energizes me. Doing workshops, teaching energizes me. Yet, yet, this is what I found interesting about this creative thing. That is true that I, I get my charge from being around people and getting to know them and and, and just listening and talking with them. I also noticed that mo most of my videos are out in the woods. And that's because I'm in flow, I'm in the flow zone when I'm out there seemingly alone I'm with all of you, of course. However, if creative juice is flowing wise, um, you know, the brook is babbling away. You know, the, you got, I'm sure you hear the woodpeckers going and it's like a loud quiet, I guess. This kind of sounds kind of like you know, an oxymoron, but it is what it is. The woods are actually like a loud quiet. And that's when I, I am so just inspired out in the quiet zone. So I found that kind of interesting that creatives have are kind of a combination or they go from maybe they oscillate from their extroverted charge to retreating to the woods or maybe your own niche if you're in, you know, Manhattan or everywhere, anywhere, uh, you know, urban. I was actually there this weekend and oh my God, it's so much fun eating. We had Greek, all in one day, we had Greek and Mexican that landed in Harlem and on the I think it's called the Beachlander, Baylander, or something. It's a boat that didn't move, but it had really good crab cakes. Um, yeah, so inspired by people. I love people. Retreat to be re re retreat to the uh, to the woods. Oh, I also retreat out with the goats. I'm gonna let them out soon too. There might be another video coming. And we let out our inner five year old to play. We're very in touch with our inner child. Really in touch with our inner child. So imagination wise, and also feeling wise, because. Again, we tend to think with our feelings, so good and not so good. Because thinking with our feelings, because we're, we're empaths, usually we, f we can just feel what's going on in the room. And obviously, like specific with, with financial decisions, it's not generally a good idea to make those based on emotion. So again, double-edged sword. And, oh, one thing that's, um, I don't know, I'm going to say good. I don't, like, don't want to really label it with anything because it just is what it is. So why label it? And this is definitely true for me. The creative's mind doesn't slow down, really, ever. Doesn't slow down, ever. Um, and it can be in the night, it can be in the morning, it can be in the shower, it can be when you're on a boring date. It can be anywhere, and you see something in a window on the street, you see something, you hear something, somebody read something, and all of a sudden your mind's off and going, and it's like a connect the dots in situation, which people often cannot follow, but we know how we landed there. And then all of a sudden, we're we've got a, an idea for a, for a, for a video or or a podcast or a film or a like I said a business or a, a new T-shirt line or who knows. Uh, but it doesn't shut off, so that can be hard sometimes. You know, we don't usually don't sleep a lot or well. I actually do sleep through, but I don't need as much sleep. And um, we're often relaxation shamed, and not anymore because I've made it really clear that I don't relax the way that other people do. So they'll say, "Why can't you just sit down and watch a movie?" Well, let me see. That's how you relax, and that's not how everybody relaxes. And I, I, I read voraciously. It's it's in just in spurts. I'm not going to sit down for four hours. Why? Because that's way too much sitting, and sitting's overrated. And I relax while running, skiing, walking in the woods, and I, that's when I'm feeling all zen out. Not sitting, vegetating, watching a movie. I, and I can do that sometimes, but it's got to be something that really captivates me. Um, and truthfully, I'd rather watch them at home because the sensory thing with the popcorn chewing and the talking people walking around I don't really enjoy that too much and if I'm watching it at home I can get up and move around and then sit back down that's just my own thing we also creativity has a lot to do with problem solving and creatives are very good problem solvers because we think outside the box 
we, we think outside the box naturally. It's just we don't even know how to not do it, which is why we often, I have this down too, we often don't take the credit because somebody say, wow, you just did that, you just came up with, and we're like, well, yeah, just, and it just kind of like, I don't know, like water through a faucet. So why, why take credit for that? It just rolled right through and I, you know, out it came. Um, we stay on task as long as we're interested. We said that. Um, oh, when we're in flow zone, we talked about the work of Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. We lose track of time. We forget about when we're really in it. Like if I'm writing a Psychology Today article or, or teaching or doing a workshop for my well-being role with parents in the parent to parent group, whatever. It's like time just leaves and there's nowhere else I'd be, no one else I'd rather be. And it's just this joyful state of flow. Um, and it, when we are creating at the highest level, that can be a chef doing his, her, their masterpiece, or, um, whatever it is, somebody's creating some kind of something for their business. And it, it, we're busting out of functional fi fixedness. So that's when something has a particular use that we're all used to, like a lawnmower engine just mows a lawn. A rain boot, it's all like the farmers wear around to these tall rain boots. Well, you know what? If you only, if you lost one, and it, it's April and, you're, and May, well here, May, almost June, you're trying to plant stuff, fill it with dirt, throw some sunflower seeds in there, ah, you just change the, the use of that big tall farmer rain boot and it looked kind of cool. Uh, we can find all kinds of different uses for things because we just see it. We see new possibilities in old things, which is also why the originality thing we were talking about in the last video, I think I have to do a part three because I'm not through this and it's already almost 12 minutes. There really isn't any such thing because, and it's, it's not, it's not stealing. It's just, we look at old ideas, old things, functionality wise, and we, our mind just goes like this and we see new possibilities and it just comes to us, just novel, novel ideas for old stuff. So, so it's all new, but it's coming from, it's kind of like we, per, we, I guess we repurpose maybe. And it's something we really can't shut off and probably don't want to. I know I don't. Um, and so we can, you know, stealing information. We're not stealing. We are, we are seeing with a new lens that comes up with something brand new. If it kept it the same, then that might be stealing, but we see something brand new and it's very, very cool. Um, and, and lastly, I'm actually creating a Zen Den right now. Our daughter, my youngest daughter's helping me. We need a creative niche. Like we've got to have our, some space. And it, it's for, well, for me as a fast minder, I need simple, I need simple, which is why the woods really works for me because clutter hurts my head as well as the squirrels who all live in there. They get upset. So um, we need our, our nice space to call our own, even if it's nature, because you don't have the space, whatever, but call it your own. Clutter free, because clutter on the outside causes clutter on the inside, and clutter's like a gigantic roadblock to creativity. Okay, we're going past the time here, so I'm gonna talk about more later. This is Kimberly Quinn, signing off from the very hot and humid and lovely Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, very creative day.